Let's break again from our Libya coverage now to come back home. And Queen Elizabeth will be focusing on official business on what's the second day of her Australian visit. For more, Melissa Clark joins us now from Canberra. Melissa, good morning. She's got some official duties and uh, a rather big event to attend tonight. That's right. She'll be coming down here, down Dunrussell Drive to Government House, where we have the Prime Minister and the Opposition Leader coming to visit the Queen here at the official residence in Yarralumla. Later on this evening, the Queen will be having an official reception at the Great Hall at Parliament House, where she will give a speech as part of those ceremonial duties. She's been warmly welcomed in Australia so far into this trip, but for someone who can give us perhaps a broader perspective of how the Queen's visit is going in Australia, I'm joined by the BBC's Royal Correspondent, Nicholas Witchell. Thanks very much for joining us. A pleasure. Pleasure. Now, you don't believe that this is necessarily Her Majesty's last visit to Australia. Do you think she may well come again in the future? I do, Melissa. I, I don't know quite how this idea has taken hold, uh, and I'm quite sure that there has been no official decision within Buckingham Palace that this should be a farewell final visit. It all depends, obviously, on her health, and at the moment that seems perfectly sound for a, a woman of 85. And considering that her entire reign has been hallmarked by doing her duty, by not letting people down, I think... Assuming that her health remains good, that in a couple of years' time, if there is a, a good reason to, to be coming to Australia, she will do so. And certainly her itinerary has been quite full for this trip as well. How does it compare to some of her uh, other trips that she's taken in recent well, times? Well, it's fairly measured. You know, uh, the, the planners are very much aware that she's 85, that her husband is 90, and that consideration has to be given to that fact. So it's not much more than one or two engagements every day, though in Melbourne and Brisbane it's rather different. Uh, and then, of course, Chogham. So it will be busy, but it's uh, designed with her health, obviously, as a consideration. Now, she's been warmly welcomed in this visit, and uh, as has Prince William's most recent trip just before he got married, when he came to visit uh, deserve victims of the the natural disasters both in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, is the monarchy making an effort to perhaps reassert itself, use some soft power for a, a bit of a positive response? I think the monarchy is aware that in Prince William and now obviously with uh, happily married to Catherine Middleton that they have a considerable asset. Now he wants to come, He was I was with him in, in Christchurch and in Australia and he did, he made a, a, a very positive impression. He wants to get out and meet people. It's part of his pr whole process of learning the job of monarchy, of uh, the, the job that he will inherit one day. So, you know, yeah, it, it, I think Australia um, is perhaps more at ease with the monarchy than it has been for some considerable time. There's a, there's a large proportion of the population which is, has always been at ease with it. But the whole debate about whether Australia should become a republic seems to be rather in the doldrums at the moment. I think Republicans concede that. Uh, we've had a royal wedding, you've got a, a young king but one there, and that, I guess, must be having an impact on public opinion. Well, it certainly is off the immediate agenda, both for the opposition leader, who is a monarchist, and uh, Julia Gillard, who has said, certainly, while the Queen is on the throne, it's not an issue for Australia. What is the perception in the UK of Australia's position of seemingly to be further away from being, becoming a republic than perhaps uh, any other time in recent decades? I mean, I don't know that there is a perception as such. I think um, in the UK there is perhaps some curiosity that that it isn't more of an issue, but when you come here, uh, you realise that there are so many other things that are more pressing. But I do think that at some point, uh, before very long, political leaders in Canada, in Australia, in New Zealand, are going to have to sit down and think about this and uh, address the whole issue of what they do want to happen to this institution. At the moment, there is no uh, uh, public debate about it or public expectation of any change, uh, but at some point, I guess, people will have to uh, consider what they want to happen. If and when that point comes in Australia, is there any repercussion or, or, or negative effect on the royal family for a country like Australia having seen to distance itself from the monarchy, or is it not, not or does that not have an effect in contemporary times? I don't think it does particularly. I mean, I think that there is a very um, grown up and, and understanding attitude within Buckingham Palace that it is uh, uh, any country's democratic right to decide who its head of state should be. Um, I think Buckingham Palace was actually quite relaxed when the referendum took place in 1999. As the Queen said, it, it, is, it was then and remains entirely an issue for Australia to decide what it wishes to do. Well, Nicholas Witchell, enjoy the rest of your trip in Australia as well. Thank you. And uh, the Queen will, of course, uh, continue on with her duties and formal duties today, but we, of course, have those trips to Brisbane and Melbourne later on the week before she heads to Perth for the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting next weekend. Melissa, thanks so much.